All right, guys, welcome back. It's me, Daniel, with VintageMagic.com, and today's video is Beckett Package Mail Day. That's right, Beckett Package Mail Day. I uh, we got this box, this box here, and it's pretty damn heavy. I probably say, I don't know. Let's see. I'm gonna check it away. It's like 28 pounds. 28 pounds. So. When you guys get your Beckett orders, I submitted this in Dallas when I was in Dallas. It comes like this. It comes like, if you have enough cards, it looks like a brick of cocaine. Like this. It's absolutely ridiculous. It's like a brick of cocaine. You know, I'll even... And I don't even know why they wrap it in black, to be honest with you. I don't know why they'll just use uh, clear plastic. Um, in the past, they used to use uh, clear past plastic. I remember this back in the, but I don't know what it is. Maybe uh, for security purposes, whatever. Uh, it's their new thing. But apparently, you know, it's funny because when you ship cargo, like this is FedEx. Well, this is ground actually, so there's no TSA flight restrictions. But what's funny is when you when you go to the airplane, there is a lot of issues with uh, airplane stuff. Um, cards always always are scanned all the time. I think almost every single time I've been on a flight uh, for the TSA line, there's any large amount of cards, even binders, they come out as like some weird dense object. I don't know, but I'll tell you right off the bat, graded cards are just worse. They always get the airplane uh, check every single time. So be prepared for that. All right, so I'm going to do here is it's kind of weird. I have my tripod set up. I'm just gonna break this out of the plastic case. So there'll be a little bit of dead time here as I get the cards out. But yeah, I wanna talk to you guys about life in the graded world. What are you guys up to? What's new, different? Uh, talk to me about it. I mean, I, uh, I've been talking to a lot of people about grading lately, and there's been a lot of like talk about uh, the scruntleness of Beckett, uh, you know, the orders being late. Uh, there's been issues with, uh, you know, recently, the big news actually, I don't know if you guys have heard of this already, Beckett used to have their 10 day guaranteed service. And so that service actually got discontinued uh, recently. Um, and that service was discontinued and um, no longer uh, at, this, at this time. Main reason why of this is because I, uh, the, the amount of volume, the amount of people that are basically submitting cards to Beckett is at a record high. So they actually, uh, on their website at beckett.com uh, slash grading or whatever uh, the tab is, you can you will see that there is massive I mean there's massive amount of um, uh, like there's this map like this thing they post like yeah we've basically uh, have had all time lar uh, high submissions and we're kind of at the point where we got to discontinue the service so you know it is what it is that is life but I thought I'd share that with you guys because I thought that was kind of interesting here is some of the first cards. So there's obviously a lot of cards here. I'm going to break this video up in multiple videos. Um, and because of the Beckett ang the angle of the cards, it's really, really hard to get uh, the, ex I don't know, the, the kind of the quality I want to get out of this. So I'm going to do my best. I know there's a lot of cards, but you know, some of them, it, there's a lot of, basically my idea of this submission was, you know, I wanted to submit some alpha beta cards and I also had a bunch of summer magic cards uh, for some set collectors that may want to collect that. So I want to get those submitted too and uh, get that going. But yeah, so a uh, quick market thing I want to talk about is I did these videos about the current market uh, itself and I think there's this incredible trend going on. Uh, people are really uh, ramping up their collecting and their investing of magic cards. 
Um, they're really, there's a lot of uh, growth in these cards because I think people are really speculating on the market coming up uh, for the future. Uh, I don't think they're buying into it to just for the short term. I think a lot of people are saying, hey, look, you know, if I buy these now, I am going to have to pay uh, less basically later because I'll be paying more later on. So why not just do that? A lot of people have told me that, you know, especially the graded cards, it's kind of like one of those things, like sometimes you're competing with so many different collectors, you really don't have an opportunity um, sometimes to um, uh, kind of get that card ever again. So in many cases, it's, it's a smart decision to basically get, uh, to buy them now, then sit around and then you know pay a ton more later on. I think that's kind of the ongoing consensus of the cards when you buy the cards. I think that's a, a, a valid point to be made because uh, the cards are so, so popular right now. There's so much activity in owning the cards. It's pretty incredible. So I want to keep that in mind when you're investing in the cards um, to keep, uh, you know, that's kind of one of the market trends I've seen is that if, you know, people are not wanting to wait around and be, you pay more effectively. And it's kind of uh, an interesting trend. All right, so what do you guys collect out there? I mean, talk to me. Are you guys interested in, uh, you know, graded cards at all? Have you thought about investing in graded cards? Um, why do you like graded cards? Do you think the trend's gonna keep going up? Do you think it's gonna go down? Uh, where do you guys think it's going? Because I, I feel like there's a lot of uh, different, you know, there's a lot of, uh, of different opinions about this. And I'm very intrigued to know your guys' opinion on the cards in general. Now, what I'm doing here is for the video, I'm going to like sort them in color. Uh, I don't even, I don't even know that. You know what? I don't even freaking know. I mean, maybe that would probably help for like the longer term of the video. I'll do that. But first thing what I do when I get an order by guys is basically, I basically try to get sort all the cards together in some fashion so I can basically um, kind of help myself later on. Uh, put the cards together in by color um, and sets and all that kind of stuff. So I don't know, do you guys, when you guys get your orders, how do you guys do it? Uh, how does that process go? I'd like to know that also, but I'll tell you, I'll show you what you got, what I do and we can kind of go from there. All right, so uh, first things first, um, all right, so, for the cards graded here, uh, let's see how I can do this for the angle. Yeah, so this video, so every video is gonna be about, oh, this is a lot better here, like this. Sorry, guys. So, uh, I'm still trying to figure this out, guys. I appreciate you guys, obviously, paying attention and watching the videos and such, but obviously, I'm not a pro, a pro like Casey Neistat, who has a trillion thousand views on his channel. Unbelievable, right, that guy. All right, so it looks like, guys, the quality is going to look better if I go the opposite direction. All right, so, yeah, so when you submit the cards, by the way, this particular order, I actually was flew to Dallas, got some business done, submit the cards. Um, but in many cases, um, you know, most people send the cards, mail them to uh, Beckett. And there's a process to that. I'm going to have to go through that later on. But uh, there is a way to submit the cards so they are going to be there safely, which is really important. Really important if you're going to submit cards to Beckett and to PSA and all that. But here we go. All right. So I think I got all set up. I got this. Okay. It looks to me that if I do it this way, you're going to get the best result. Is that good? Yeah, like that. All right, so we got a summer edition uh, underground C. Uh, not much to talk about this card. It's the top tier. Now oh, this card's freaking beautiful. God, look how beautiful the colors are. You see the saturation on that? Oh my God. This card is pretty 
pretty much um, the issue with this car for surface is there's sometimes like this little print dot that's like somewhere around here like right there there's a dot there but it you know it's one of those cards where it's uh I've seen a couple played ones but I, I also think the surface sometimes gets marked on for that little black line and I don't know I think everything one I've, one I've ever seen always has that black line interesting all right so I'm just gonna go through these so got a 95 Hercules recall summer now again guys if you guys are looking to purchase any of these cards uh, just contact me at vintagemagic.com slash uh, uh, go to contact us and we can kind of talk about uh, a possible deal and pricing. Uh, it, I think uh, for me, the Summer Magic set is probably one of my favorite sets of all time. I know it's one of the most difficult sets ever to accomplish uh, to ever get uh, an actual set because it's so rare and I, I know there's been a lot of speculation and concern like well how many are there and who has them and why does it occur and I think you know my feeling on misprint cards is that miss I, I keep messing this camera up sorry guys my feel with misprint cards is that they are pretty much um, stolen property in some weird way like you know, not like stolen in like criminal stuff anymore because it's been past due. But technically, in a way, I mean, all misprint stuff that was like test prints, that stuff you've seen for test prints, they're in a way considered like property that was thrown away by wizards or uh, given to them. You know, and I'm, when I use the word stolen, I mean it in a very loose term. Like, you know, like I don't mean it like stolen as it was like stolen and you know it was uh property that was theirs but it, it's kind of it was like samples like in a way a lot of misprints and rarities sometimes are basically just you know like oddball stuff like it could be some type of sample um it could be some kind of weird type of printing of a card and, and they just get you know thrown away or, you know, in many cases, I think employees even ask wizards and say, oh, you know, is this something I can just have as a, you know, memento, excuse me, memento or whatever. I'm not really sure. I'm not sure how it went back in the day. Um, what I do know is a lot of misprints were never uh, mainstream. So because of that, it really has an incredible... Um, like rarity thing because because they're not mainstream guys there these cards were not really in main circulation so what that tells me is that there's a tremendous um like first off magic itself has been you know there's a lot of collectors interested in and in stuff like this for many many years and you know in different capacities and so when you have uh uh, collectors who are hungry for like a like a albino card or a crimp card or a miscut card or in this case summer magic which uh, the story on this basically is these cards were in between fourth edition and revised and revised as you guys know third edition was really 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 bad like in terms of the colors uh, the colors are really blah as you guys know and um, these particular, uh, they, they wanted to correct that. They wanted to make it more saturated, more vibrant. And I think they did a really good job. Um, but you'll notice like Elvis Archer's, this box, you can't even read what it says. And it says first strike and some flavor text. But it's so freaking dark that you can't really tell. So that's that was one of the problems with um, Summer Magic. And... You know, you have high saturations like this Benalge Hero has a beautiful orange tone, which some cards turn out really nicely, but some cards just literally just sucked, sucked completely. And so it, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, this particular set was, um, I, I don't even know the exact story on it and nor 
I don't even know how it was, you know, like I think the distribution on it was there was some cards or boxes or something that was distributed uh, to like Ireland. I want to say some people said Ireland or Texas and different areas um, that are kind of odd. And then the, apparently there were like some boxes or cases or something thrown, thrown, you know, in the garbage can or something like at Wizards. I don't know. And people, employees grabbed them all up. So I don't know. There's a lot of weird rumors going on. And the definitive answer to it all, I, I, I don't know the exact definitive story. Like I don't know the 100% story of it. So I'm not going to, you know, and part of it is kind of a private thing in general. I think people don't want you know I, I think people don't really you know have all the information so I think it's hard to just make a lot of assumptions but nevertheless these cards have become extremely coveted by collectors like this one the Monte Cords. it's so freaking dark look at that that you can't you can't even, like, you can't even see the red stuff you know the red color Cards like Death Grip, that looks pretty nice. Yeah, and so, you know, some it, it's kind of one of those uh, things where people really, really like this set. There's people that really want to possibly make a set. Uh, there's been rumors like, well, how many sets are there? Yada, yada, yada. And, you know, that's hard to determine. I don't, I don't know. I don't know at all. That's the problem. All right, guys, so I'm going to cut this video. Uh, there's going to be several parts of these videos to go through the cards. But uh, at pretty much the 17 minute block, I have to cut it because of this, this type of camera. All right, guys, we'll talk soon. Thanks for watching. Talk to you in the next video.